Coming in at just over 45%, Victoria is the state with the highest yes vote overall. And when you drill down into the numbers, it's very clear cut where the yes and no votes came from. The federal inner city seat of Melbourne, held by the Greens leader Adam Bant, delivered the strongest yes in the country at nearly 78%. And the teal seats of Kuyong and Goldstein were in contrast to the national vote too. Victoria's yes hotspots essentially form a circle around Melbourne's inner city and what's happened here is mirrored in every other state capital too. The core of support for The Voice quickly drops away as you move towards the outer metropolitan suburbs. If you've got a university degree, you have access to obviously uh, better paying in employment overall, generally speaking obviously. Um, and people who don't have a university degree obviously have lower levels of income uh, and in particular when it comes to Melbourne they obviously can only buy homes in the outer city, in the outer, sorry, the outer suburbs um, or rent in the outer suburbs uh, and hence we've got this very significant socioeconomic divide in Melbourne and we can see that reflected in the results. Nationwide, the data shows that the further away you live from your state's capital city, the more likely you are to have voted no. And that's borne out here in Victoria. In regional and rural areas, there's very strong opposition to the voice. In the Mallee, 78.5% voted no. In the seat of Nichols, which takes in Shepparton and Echuca, 76.4%. And in Gippsland, 73.1%, which is in stark contrast to the inner city. Here's Jesse Thompson. There was lament in Melbourne City after the referendum was defeated, even in the country's most progressive state. There's no beating around the bush. The referendum result hurts, and it really does. But it was outside the CBD where the no vote was decided. The inner cluster of yes voting electorates easily outnumbered by the chorus of no's from the suburbs and regions beyond. People in the city don't know what happens in the bush. I just thought, um, why like, go with something that creates division? And they have been bullying us around, so I'm not going to be nice and just say yes. Changing the constitution is always dangerous. Victoria is possibly the most progressive state in Australia and, and we are disappointed for that. We're disappointed for the whole country. Outside the political sphere, where severe disadvantage continues to plague First Nations Australians, bruised Indigenous leaders vowed not to give up. We will continue to do what we do, um, but we still need a mechanism. What's really clear though, uh, we can't just keep doing things the same way. For many Indigenous leaders, the focus now has turned to treaty. Victoria is the furthest down the treaty path, with government negotiations due to begin early next year. Indigenous advocates hope that greater autonomy over their lives will eventually follow. We're focused here in Victoria on practical local outcomes. That's what we're about as a part of a treaty process. We've got a job to do and we're going to get on and we'll deliver a treaty for the people of Victoria. State opposition leader John Pesudo voted against The Voice, but his party has said it will rally and unite to close gaps in life outcomes. Jesse Thompson, ABC News.